Hey everybody, this is Petey from the Spinner Rack, and today I wanted to do something about a little known mini backup feature in the Avengers series, the so called, what I call the members only Avengers series by um, Bob Harris and Steve Epting, was a giant, giant man story. Um, he's had many solo stories, but this would be four issues that would lead to getting him back up to where he's supposed to be as a hero, right? Now, there's going to be a sad part in this series because this, once again, is a, another expose on the work of George Perez, as, as you've seen the cover that I just showed you. That is a Perez cover. Right, we got. I don't know how to do this. This is a tough one, right? So let's take this, put it like this for now, right? But at the same time, let's give you a little history on Hank Pym, this giant man. He started out in the um, Marvel comic, um, Tales of Astonish, I think, 27. And I think as the man in the anthill, he uses him, shrinks, and he ultimately becomes um, small. And then um, next he appears as Ant-Man, right? And then a little time later, um, he became Giant-Man, right? Then Giant Man stayed, he stayed as Giant Man for um, a little while in Tales of Astonish and the Avengers. Until, I think the Avengers, he had left the Avengers and he got a new costume. And then he lost his title. Now many people look at this as continuity. But at the same time, when Stan Lee was kind of trying to figure out a, a note for a character, when the book isn't kind of selling... That's where you'd see these these majority of changes that would happen with the character, right? Same with the Hulk, getting more radiation, seemingly being able to fly, stuff like that. And then later, you know, then it became him and Rick Jones and less of Bruce Banner and uh, Iron Man changing outfits. Um, Spider-Man, you don't see that many changes to him as a superhero, right? So, because he's successful right from the beginning. So Ant-Man, so Giant-Man to Ant-Man, Ant-Man to Giant-Man, then to him having a helmet, then to him becoming Goliath, someone stuck as a giant, and then him becoming, having, become, having schizophrenia and becoming, um, who was it, um, Yellow Jacket, and then a strange occurrence happened. Now, when we look at this as continuity, this is not continuity. This is Marvel, uh, Stan Lee and Roy Thomas trying to find another hook for the character. So they had him stuck as Giant Man for a little while. Or Goliath as for a little while. And then I guess they had a new costume that they thought was cool. And they decided to put Hank Pym in that costume. Right? So he also developed a partner which was the Wasp. That um, reminded him of his the wife that died. And they would have a romance. She would become a hero also, becoming the Wasp. Janet Van Dyne become the Wasp. And then she would be with him during these times. And during the, the thing, Roy's hook initially when he rejoined, the, when he lost his title, he could then come back to the Avengers. So he lost his title. Him and, um, him and Wasp lost their title to the Hulk and the Submariner. So he went back to the Avengers. And they had the hook of him being stuck for a little while as Giant Man, but then they had the new costume. But then something else happened. As you go along, there were artists that liked the Ant-Man costume, like Neil Adams, like George Perez, like John Byrne, like Dave Michelini, uh, like Bob Layton. So you'd see Ant-Man pop back up. And you see um, Neil Adams was the first to do it. And having, having um, Ant-Man just sort of pop up in the Avengers series as Hank Pym as Ant-Man. Then later, 
when um and um I don't think he had any sort of issues in the Avengers post this part. He he fixed the Avenger the vision, and he's pretty much positive after that point. But then, um, uh, Jim Shooter gets on the book, and he does a story where, um, Hank has a a mental breakdown. Now this is that was another story, and I'll show you these covers. Um, this is another story where. It feels like um, Jim Shooter and George Perez wanted to put Ant-Man in the book. So they had him become Ant-Man. And that slowly deals to the bride of um, Ultron. But soon after, and I think this is the issue. This issue here, which is, I think, part of the bride of Ultron. Where they're following, they're following uh, Jocasta. And, and it's like... Um, wherever she go, because she's leading them to Ultron. And, um, of course, who is it? Um, Miss Marvel comes to help. This is where she joins the team. And, of course, see, here we have him. We have um, Yellow Jacket coming and taking the characters that can't fly. And he's pretty, he's pretty solid in this sort, right? No one is second guessing him. He's back up to speed. And then I just want to show you one bit where they run into Ultron, and Ultron blasts him in the face. But he, but um, Yellow Jacket was prepared, so he couldn't use his deadly weapon against them. And then the Avengers attack, right? So this shows you that he got back up to speed, right? But then we have the classic, oh, no, no. Before we get to the classic story, post this issue, um, we'll post the, the breakdown. Hank Pym and um, the Wasp were in desperately in love and shown throughout this series from, uh, I guess it's issue 161 after the breakdown. Every issue post that, they're just madly in love. And you can see that in the Taskmaster story. You can see that in the next Ultron story they do in 201 and 202. And then when David Michelini or Stephen Grant is off the book, Jim Shooter takes on the book. And he, fresh off of the death of Phoenix, decides that Hank Pym needs to go through some terrible stuff. So he could have his own sort of Phoenix story where... Oh, an Avenger goes bad. So, Hank Pym goes bad. It just gets worse and worse for him. He keeps, he smacks Jan. There's a debate on who, whose fault it was. I'd have to believe the buck has to stop with Shooter. Since he was editor-in-chief and he's the art-correcting, he's the art-correcting giant of Marvel. So, we got to those bits, right? Then Roger Stern redeems him and has him become you know, utilize the scientific abilities to stop the the lethal legion, I think, the, or the masters of evil, right? So then he leaves, he has this dramatic moment where he leaves Jan, and he apologizes to her, and she breaks down and cries. It was a powerful moment. He comes back, I think, in an annual, but this is his first foray into joining the Avengers, the West Coast Avengers one, right? I think um, Steve Englehart wasn't too keen on him doing I don't think. I think he talked about this in an interview recently. But in this story, um, Mark Grunwald said, use Henry Pym and call him. He's going to be on a team as Dr. Pym. Right? And he slowly works his way into being in the field. But he's kind of has a lot of doubts. You know, what he's going through. And he's not really the toughest hero on the team anymore. This giant man, he was fairly tough. He kind of um, almost, he has to take on the entire Avengers and he has to borrow, cheat, and steal to um, deal with it. So, after that, but he's fairly restored and people started to like him. Um, I already pointed in one of our videos about what John Byrne had done. In this issue... I think the first three issues kind of set up Hank Pym being back 
at 100%. Because he's here working on something. Hawkeye is the leader. But, as the story goes on, Wasp comes in. She's kind of barking orders. And Hank kind of starts cuts barking out orders, right? So the best part of these these two um, founding Avengers just kind of take on the, the 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 mantle of leadership with ease, right? So you have see right here, you see um, Hank Pym figure things out, and he comes up with a plan. And they go off. Now this isn't lost on on um, this isn't lost on Hawkeye, right? So Hawkeye is kind of struggling with things that are going on in this series. I'm sorry about giving you stuff because the art in this other thing is going to be atrocious, even though it's a great story, right? So there's this other bit where they're traveling, and Hank Pym has kind of been leading everything, and the Wasp says, you know, and this is where they're kind of sharing leadership, where um. Wasp kind of runs off, and he's saying, darling. So I think one of Burns bits that he wanted to do was that in a time when no one knew, they went and got remarried, right? But um, Marvel ultimately, when he was pushed off the book, didn't utilize that, right? So then Hawkeye says that they right here to get them in, but then Dr. Pym once again steps in, and Hawkeye notices that he was running the show for a short while. So this one is a great bits. And the last thing, I won't get into this series too much. We have the Vision who's been taken apart. And then we have the next, he's like been totally taken apart. And then in the next issue, I don't know, like 12 hours? Hank Pym has him operational, right? So he's not having the failures like Shooter and people say. But soon after Burn was pushed out, he's him and Jan say that they're they're just friends and they're only gonna be friends and such like that. And this deals with that. So George Perez, and you can see George Perez did a great cover, but the art on the inside isn't up to snuff. So this is one of the tough parts about the Perez has come up with this great story that has a lot of B-movie elements, like giant monsters, like intrigue, but it's kind of tough to sort of see, right? Because we have, we have um, seemingly Ant-Man, this giant man with his, um, with his helmet, but it looks like, you know, we, we've seen him ride the ants before, but it's actually giant ants, right? So... And as he goes and tries to do it, he realizes this is from the classic ant that's from the Cree Skull, Nash, who's now like um, okay, kind of rabid. And they have this moment where there's a moment of clarity, but then goes for the kill. And then Giant Man has to take out his friend. That's the ant. So this is it. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to explain through this because the art isn't that solid. It's really tough. But at the same time, I was very taken by Perez's writing during this period, right? So he has him, he takes that, and he, he has this internal monologue where he's second-guessing himself on what he should mention about Jan, right? So he's kind of factoring what's going on in the past or not, right? And then Jan is also talking about her feelings to a psychiatrist, I mean, her feelings about... um. But Hank saying it always comes back to him. And here's the part that uh, Roy Thomas did where they decided they're just going to be friends and go their separate ways. And then as they're traveling and not talking, Jan is kind of like, hey, are you having second thoughts? And he's like, no, we should go back to that. So she, this is interesting here, right? So she decides to go back to being a socialite, doing like a fashion show, all this other stuff. All this stuff, that's a viable sort of profession for Jan, right? She's like, 
Jesus, Jam is a very talented person. So it's not taking on her as just some sort of flighty character. And she had other romances, right? She wasn't sitting there by herself, right? And then at this expose, she comes out as the wasp. She's doing her thing. And then a giant, like a, like a King Kong shows up because her agent is King Kong. Then the actual King Kong comes by, but it's actually, you know, it's actually um, Hank Pym. And he does some of his own jokes, and she's really surprised. But in real life, after this is retelling the story, she falls out. Right? And then, of course, since the back in the Avengers days, um, Hank has been working with um, Bill Foster again. And they're kind of talking things over. And um, they realize that um, some, you know, something is going on, something that they don't even is expecting. What's drawing out this, these large um, ants? And it gets into a little bit of history, and not wanting um, black, you know, him to come back as um, giant man. And he talks about all the personas that he had. So this is one of the things you kind of wish Prez, if he had the time, to draw himself. There probably wasn't enough money in it for him to do that. But they just found whoever they could. And these giant ants come and they tackle and then they kill somebody. So at the same time, the military is trying to deal with this. But Ant-Man is like, let him do it. And he's like, it's not going to work. Your, your energy is only going to give them more energy. But they point out that they seem to get more energy while giant man is growing. So it's kind of a back and forth here. I'm hoping you're getting a little of this while you're looking at this, right? And he's also getting a call about Jan that she's going through something, right? And then what's the name's cut down this is Comlink, right? So, and it's a matter of life or death. So that's the first story, right? So um, Bill Forster is trying to help, but at the same time, someone has stopped him. So he's going for this fight. They're going back and forth with the army. He's trying to fight, and he's trying to, they're trying to get him out. He's trying to tell them to stay out. Yeah, this is one of the best bits, military intelligence. What an oxymoron. There's a lot of good bits in there, a lot of scientific stuff, a lot of B-movie stuff here. And this is where they try to take it out, and it doesn't work, you know. They realize that it's that, but then they're also seeing that he's affecting them. It's a back and forth between them, and they can't save the people because they get trying to fight this man, this um, praying mantis, and, and kills them. So it's a lot of drama here, but the art doesn't really hold it up. So you get a feel of what was happening in the 90s where all of the classic artists are here that you know from the image and whatnot. But sometimes they were just getting some guys that couldn't kind of put it all together. And uh, sorry to say, do we have the name? We have the Jeffrey Moore. I'm not sure what he's done. You know, sometimes you find these guys and they've gotten a million times better. And I hope that's the same for him, right? So he sort of goes from big to small, but it kind of hurts him, right? And he falls out after trying to take out this thing and calls for Bill. But Bill's been captured. He's captured by the spider, and he gets sees this eclipse. But it's actually these um these Kree soldiers, and these Kree soldiers are con connected to something that's going on with um this whole thing. And they know about, as they say it here, but um, we have the new Ant-Man, Stephen Lang, come in there and realize that Bill, Fo Bill Foster is getting smaller, right? And these guys, they have the subplot going on, but they know about Project Big. And we don't know what Project Big is yet, but... um. This is going to connect to, um,
And they start talking about the garden that's Project Big. And they realize they've developed a new ecosystem for dealing with hunger, right? So they just have this giant fruit that'll kind of cure hunger. And of course, Hank Pym says, takes credit, but then you realize he's sorry. He apologizes to him. And I think they're going to show you how they did it. But they think this Project Big is possibly connected to what's going on, right? And Bill Force is getting shorter and shorter as this goes along, right? And he's looking for Bill, but he's actually in this hospital. And they say he's been in a coma for a while, right? And then he's going, he's going actually going kind of nuts, and they had to, to subdue him. And it's similar to what happened. Now, I think this bit here, Perez was trying to do, you know, kind of maybe explain why he went kind of nuts. But at the same time, I don't think they let him go any further with that, just to have that bit there, right? And they say also he made that. So they're like, they're going to keep him under wraps for a while, right? So the psychiatrist here, he's still trying to figure out where Hank Pym is because Jan is in trouble. This is where we get to one of the cooler bits in this story. I'm sorry, guys. The art is what it is. Burns says that um, bad bad art, can't, good story can't save bad art. But then there's some still some payoff. So Jan is turned into uh, just like a fit, you know, was it a fifty a fifty foot woman, right? So let's put. This over here. Let's put this over here. And let's keep going, right? We're going to keep going with this story, right? So we only have two issues left. Hank has been captured. And you know that he's been kind of nuts in the last issue. And they realize he's responsible for all this. And he has to do this. And he says, I'm, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm responsible. Believe me, Dr. Pym, I'm well aware of that. <laughs> why, do you think, why do you think you're in there? Right? So they talked about him. He's feeling, he's feeling remorseful. And he's kind of kind of stuck here. Right? So now, Bill Foster is getting smaller and smaller. He needs a microscope to see him. Right? And then they call up and say um, Janet Van Dyne's awake and she's going to be zip. Then we get the attack of the 50 foot Jan, right? So he's getting a lot of B movies. I mean, incredible shrinking people, the giant bat, giant ants. This, if we had a powerhouse artist to do, it would have been amazing. And it has a lot of sci fi in it. So you can see. Perez is a real big sci-fi guy and this even though there's a lot of B movie stuff in here and she's feeling this pain so she wants Hank to come back to kind of help her. So I must find Hank. Right? <laughs> and she's wrecked everything. But at the same time, Ant Man is falling out. So something happened wrong with him. So something's already then we go to Tigra and something's happening to her. Right? So, Giant Man is trying to figure out how to escape, but they sedate him and he can't get out. But he hasn't turned back to normal size. Right? And we hint back to the party. Right? They've kind of rekindled their relationship. Right? And they're talking. And he's trying, trying to show he's kind of being spontaneous. Right, and this is one of the best bits that's in here, right? And um, we cut again to, and he, I think they're looking at his comm unit. So they're talking to him, and he's able to show her the giant ants that are used for this ecosystem for this farm, right? And this is uh, NAS to 12, and he looks at him weirdly, and then... And they decide to turn off the, the comm link because it's just showing too much stuff. Because they were madly in love. And that's the Hank Pym that that um, Byrne liked, that Perez liked. And then since their careers are very similar, 
they work to try to put them back together, right? So Captain America's here and says, hey, we need... We need um, Hank's help. We don't know how to deal with this, right? So, because Jan is in trouble, right? So then, something's going on with um, with Tigra, making her go crazy. He's shrinking. The um, Ant Man is on the floor. So Cap is freed. Giant Man and even Hawkeye is growing. So anyone that's gotten the pin particles, is, this is affecting, right? I realize that um, Giant Man is the only one that can stop this. And saying any sort of energy kind of increases power. So Ant Man feels like, Giant Man kind of feels like he's the only one that can save it. And he comes out there and she's, <laughs> he's like, come up a bit short, right? But she kind of knocks him over and the screams in the head. And all the stuff, and he's trying to get her away from the power lines. Guys, with energy, they're gonna hit it no matter what. And with that energy and all these other things, that's the final energy to re reveal Cosmos, the creature from Cosmos. And this is from well, one of the early Tales to Astonish stories. And maybe in that effect, this almost could have been called Tales to Astonish, right? So we get into our end, right? And you're still saying. How can I put you through this issue with this bad art, right? The Cosmos, I think he's issued, introducing Tales of Astonish 45. And he um, utilized all this stuff. So we getting all that, you know, that bee monster. But he's from the, he's actually from the, you know, early 60s. Tales to Astonish. One of the first monsters that, um, Monster. So then they realize that Cosmo's been using all this stuff and all these other characters to sort of weigh on um, Giant Man to feel that this was his fault when it was actually Cosmos. But we haven't got to the, all of the bits that are there, right? And that Nash initially tried to warn him what was going on, right? So all of these characters that people that have been hit by the pin particles and now, you know, showed up in this series, right? Tigra, who was small, is actually a burn shot, right? And every even Jan is sort of knocked out, right? So, the story is Hank the Giant Killer, right? So, as we go, we have um, Crystal, who's kind of doubtful that uh, Hank can handle this situation, right? They kind of validate his hypothesis, but there's not much they feel and he can't do it. So he's out there. This is possibly the best shot in the whole series by this artist, Jeffrey Moore, right? So, sorry guys, we're doing it because I really enjoyed the story. So, um, but this... They had this big out brawl, which Marvel should basically get someone back in, use the initial original covers, and get someone to retell this story, right? Yep, Phil Jimenez to do this as a tribute to to Perez, and he goes in there, he's taking apart Cosmos, right? But at the same time. Cosmos, the creature from Cosmos, really he's in, he's in danger. He decides he needs to go back. He opens a rift. But at the same time, Hank decides to go with him. And they're like, he's gone. They can't connect with him. And Cap feels like it's on him, right? Everybody's in trouble. What's happening? Nobody knows. And then...
And they realize the, the source of it didn't originate from Hank. Right? It actually, you know, originated from the criminal, Eric Justin, who's called Goliath. Right? And then he said, <laughs> I knew you'd find me somehow. This is my world, Dr. Pym. Welcome to it. Not exactly what you expect to find, is it? Right? I bet you'd figure I'd be sitting here on some throne or something or maybe riding shotgun with some big techno weapon that was using to shoot out all these expansion fields at your buddies. Any scenario that would cast me as partner to the Cosmodians instead of their slave, right? And we realize that this guy, the other Goliath, is the guy behind this thing, right? And he connected with the cosmos creatures. And he couldn't wait to join them. But at the same time, they were like, hey, let's um, utilize him. And they turned him into a slave. And he got stuck there. Right? And they and Hank Pym realizes that they were able to utilize the, by making him feel like he was to blame. This would go back to all of his, remember, his, all of his failures. Even the fa biggest failure of his marriage. Right? So at the same time, he gets pulled back. And at the shot, everything is gone. Right? Everything is back to normal. Everyone is normal again. But, um... Justin is the victim. Right? He's in, um... He's, co he's comatose right now. Right? You realize the Cree guys, they weren't actually after him. They were after what was going on, right? So, he has this talk with Janet Van Dyne. And um, they finally put it back together. His love kind of helped him with the, to Jan, helped him. And look at how we, we, the art has gotten. This is like, I'm just really trying to hit the deadline. And no one at the office, anyone in the, at the office could have cleaned this up. They could have got anyone, but nobody did. But to my mind, they finally got Jan and Giant Man back together. So it was worth it, even though in this Perez writing, it's really good. It connects with all of the stuff, only that the art is hella terrible. <laughs> it is hella terrible. But in my mind, Perez finally did it. Perez had finally got them back together. Bernard tried to do it. Like, um, let's see, since we're still here. There's so many moments in Burns' West Coast Avengers that hinted they were together. And, um... I think at some point, I guess I need to read this. Right here, where they have, where they're flying, Great Inks by um, Paul Ryan, um, R.I.P. Paul Ryan, where the fingernail destroys the Quinjet, and um, he's going to shrink, shrink Gwanda, down on the wasp size and she can carry her and then um and she says not unless you're coming with us lover i'm not gonna lose you again jan be reasonable there's nothing to be gained in all of us getting killed and then this was cool where he takes and something happens and i said what is that a magnetic field <laughs> And he gives Wanda to the wasp, his hero, she is able to hold her up, and then they fly off, right? So these moments where they're together, and, um, you know, Burn was planning to push back the same as Perez, right? But I felt that this one did it, but no, it didn't. Um, Kurt Busiek decided to push this even more, bring back the evil yellow jacket, uh, Yellow Jack with the attitude, keep having um, Giant Man change costumes like it was a personality trait. 
And um, yeah, but this was supposed to be it. This was supposed to fix it. Of course, post that, Chuck Austin, they broke them up again. And i um, sorry to say, but um, we had the greats try to bring, we had Englehart try to bring them back together. We had, um, well, Englehart didn't want to bring them back together, but they kind of were cool again. And they had these moments. Burns said they just, you know, they're around each other. They're going to start acting normal, right? And then Perez finally put the nail in the coffin after Roy, Roy Thomas took it out and said, ship them off and got rid of them. They're like, why are we getting rid of them? They should stay in the, in the Avengers, right? But anyway, it's a fun sort of story. But it's uh, one of those things where can a good story save bad art? And people would say yes, sometimes no. But that's about it. Spin a rack out.